when Darth Sidious had begun to weave his Sith sorcery over the galaxy, never could he consider his future student to be burdened by a cybernetically enhanced suit. But for Anakin Skywalker, the power of the dark side had always been difficult for him to handle, and when he committed to the tutelage of Darth Sidious, he was consumed by his darkness. Beginning his path to destruction with a brutal takeout of the Jedi Order, not even Senator Amidala could stop him, as he inevitably encountered his old master. The world of Mustafar was the site for the close of Anakin and the birth of Vader, as the Jedi Knight was too engrossed in his new strength and was defeated by his wise master. As he burned on the scoldingly hot lava bank, his limbs started to melt into the surface, but as was his destiny, he continued to stay alive when rescued by Darth Sidious and his clones. In the renamed Surgical Reconstruction Center, the Sith Lord oversaw the building of a cybernetic machine with the aid of medical droids. But instead of making a flawless suit, he decided to leave it unfinished, denying Vader from reaching his full abilities and ensuring he could not be betrayed. But what if Darth Vader upgraded his suit? Could he unlock his true powers? Or would he still be a slave to Sidious? As you're going to find out, the change of suit will affect the reign of the Empire. The layers of Vader's helmet and mask clicked into their positions as Vader took his first breath and he used a large amount of strength just to swivel his neck to face his new master. Asking for the condition of Padme, he received the news even worse than his own death as his wife had died at his own hand. Rage built inside Vader and taking his first steps as the galaxy's most terrifying machine, he clenched his fist and all of the droids and medical equipment in the room squeezed and ignited with Sith fury. The Emperor rubbed his hands together in glee as his new slave embraced the pain from the burns he had sustained and beckoned him to move away from the room. Vader was escorted to a nearby Star Destroyer as Sidious wanted him to get used to his newfound rage and joined by Admiral Tarkin and an elite group of officers, the Emperor told Vader to marvel at the scale of the Death Star and their ambitions of eliminating all light in the galaxy would soon become reality. Vader's next destination on this tour of terror was the smouldering remains of the Jedi Sanctuary and on the ground, Mass Amida conducted the burning of the Jedi and their blades, but Vader's thoughts were centred on getting out of the horrid suit. His master could sense his unease and warned about his cost for deceit, then lured him with the thought of obtaining a new red kyber crystal by killing a Jedi. Vader salivated at this thought and he immediately thought of Obi-Wan taking his old lightsaber from the lava bank and asked Sidious for the coordinates. Vader was frustrated that the location was an unknown rock formation in the mid rim and ignoring the shuttle that had been arranged for him, the new Sith took a heavily modified Republic attack shuttle and ensured that he could not be traced. Vader set off for the one area with the facilities to fix his suit and he entered the coordinates for the outer rim near the Naboo system. The Sith quickly navigated through hyperspace and emerged at the foot of the Kalida Shoals medical station, which had been used during the Clone War to house around 60,000 wounded clones. Landing a shuttle with deathly silence in one of the designated areas, the sound of Vader's new boots on the hard floor shook all of the clones that had been reassigned to the area as he marched to one of the eight entrances. The clones that had not been assigned to kill Jedi were quivering in the aura of Vader as he requested for his suit to be substituted for a better version. The medical droids carefully removed elements of his suit and Vader screamed and writhed in agony as his wounds were being unveiled to the air again, but this time they would be treated with care. All of the scars from the jaw with Obi-Wan and the burns to his body are slowly healed by the droids, but to his disgust, there was no additional materials to enhance his suit. Using his mechanical hand, he summoned an astromech, and together they managed to decipher the Republic codes, finding that Kamino gave him the best chance of a better suit. The former Jedi Knight staggered to his feet, even more determined to avenge Obi-Wan for debilitating him so severely, and his new master for intentionally making him suffer. Aware that his master would likely be tracking him, Vader decided that the best course of action was to unleash all of the station BTLB Y-Wing bombers to attack the station. As Vader meant to do, the alarms to the station screamed across the area and the clones alerted the newest division of Imperial security. The distraction enabled Vader to head for Kamino, where he knew the clones would soon be decommissioned and a new division of conscripted soldiers would strike fear in the galaxy. Arriving in one of the many hangars, the Sith realised that Sidious would have forbidden him from visiting such a location as he was filled with memories of clones and former visits to the world. 
The reason these station shock troopers couldn't fail to notice Vader, even though he tried to hide behind several crates of ammunition, and he was forced to invade their minds, so they could forget they had seen him. Whilst most intruders would have struggled to breach Kamino's defences, Vader was able to move towards his destination, when he felt a familiar echo in the Force. Ignoring what his master would view as a weakness, he carefully navigated the reinforced security to find one of the medical bays that had been used for high-level brain scans during the Clone War era. Vader's armour is thrown to one side by the medical droids, and using fragments of reinforced Durasteel that was left over from some of the starships, they locked the elements onto a new mould to create a new tower of evil. Vader felt the dark side buzzing through his body, and now he would not be denied from becoming the Sith that the Jedi and his master had feared. But if Vader had learned one lesson from his time as a Jedi, it was the patience was needed, and he set course for the route his master had intended for him to go to. As he dramatically soared back into his seat, the chilling hologram of his master flickered into view, and he should have assumed that he could not evade him. Sidious ordered Vader to return to Coruscant, without finishing his mission of retrieving a lightsaber crystal, and the former Jedi devilishly grinned beneath his mask. Wasting little time in flying to the base of the former Jedi home, Vader landed by the feet of Sidious, and the Sith Lord looked at the new suit with disgust. Extending his hands and fingers, Vader summoned one of the blades that had not been burnt, and its azure blue colour illuminated the fading light as it reflected the intense lightning attack of his master. Vader knew that this was his chance to overthrow his master, and as he inched forward, he saw fear in the eyes of Sidious, who ignited his lightsaber. The two Sith battled for the throne, as the guards and officers watched in awe and horror from any windows or orifice they could find until they met in a blade lock. As the red and blue lightsabers fizzled together, Vader reached out with his strengthened hand and tore an electro star from the hold of one of the guards, then guided it into the back of his master. Sidious fell to the floor from shock, and lifting his lightsaber over his head, Vader coldly declared that this was his way of getting a red lightsaber crystal. Before he could be met with a sudden attack, Vader sliced the Sith Lord into thousands of shards, and the duel fell into silence. Eventually ordering for his new guards to clean the mess, Vader marched to the Senate building, where the Senators had taken cover after hearing of the battle between the Sith. Vader had knowledge from his former life of how to satisfy these confused Senators, and assured them that the schemes and lies created by his master would not continue under his new regime. The terrified Senators are mostly unmoved, and Vader realised that he needed a different angle were he to maintain control over the galaxy. His first task was to find a new student, and one that would eliminate any survivors of Order 66, so he walked to his new chamber holding office, and found the Grand Vizier Masamida. The former Vice Chair swiveled to face the new Sith Lord, and raised his ceremonial staff for two royal guards, and they charged the Vader with their hidden vibroblades. Vader unsheathed the blade he had just taken from Sidious, and threw the lightsaber between their masks and helmets, as their bodies folded to the ground. Directing the lightsaber to the throat of Masamida, the Trigrian told Vader that Sidious had often gone to the works district in secret, and the Sith released his hold on the Grand Vizier. Alongside the surviving clones of the Jedi Purge, the Sith Lord ordered for his soldiers to divide themselves through the works district, as he entered the abandoned Limurge Tower. Vader could sense that the building had been untouched for a number of months, but by the base of the area, a battered protocol droid flickered, and Vader used his knowledge of droids to fix it, and he discovered that many of his master's artifacts had been moved to Coruscant's medical facility. The Sith Lord marched over to the tower which had been abandoned, before he had been forced into his new suit, and descending to the lower levels, he can hear the faint humming of force cages nearby. Within each of these cages was a Jedi Sentinel being tortured at deliberate intervals, and Vader could sense their resistance to stay in the light was fading with each moment. Leaving them to continue their fall down the dark side, he headed further down the tower, where the holocrons were located. The walls were now decorated in ancient Sith writing, but Vader could sense one series of runic lines was already used, so he subtly moved the wall inwards, revealing the vault that he wished to discover. Vader was greeted with a large area, where holocrons and artifacts were lavishly shown, and he soaked in their force energy as he returned to the Jedi Sentinels. The former Jedi guards were now simmering with hate, but Vader knew none of these Jedi would be a worthy student, so he left for one of the four landing stages, and left Coruscant in search of the second Sith. That is it for the long-awaited part 1 of What If Darth Vader Upgraded His Suit. If you'd like to see a part 2 soon, please like this video, turn on the notification bell, click that subscribe button on this channel, as well as on my other channel What If Films. And as always, leave a comment on what if you'd all like to see next, and how I can improve my videos. 
Thank you all very much for watching and see you next time.